Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Investing Lighthouse, the hub for investment enthusiasts, where we deliver the juiciest news in the financial world. Today, we're diving into a drama rocking Wall Street, featuring Carl Icahn, the legendary activist investor and the notorious short-selling firm Hindenburg Research, known for blowing the whistle on companies that are grossly overvalued or have questionable practices. So buckle up folks, this journey is full of twists and turns and underscores the crucial importance of due diligence for investors. First, let's talk about our main character, Carl Icahn. This billionaire activist investor is as famous as they come. He's the embodiment of a powerful Wall Street figure, making headlines throughout his career for shaking up corporate boards to boost share prices. Now, he and his company, Icon Enterprises LP, are on the receiving end of similar agitations. The antagonist in our story is Hindenburg Research. Now this isn't your run-off-the-mill short seller. Hindenburg Research has built a reputation as a relentless, fact-driven investigator. Their reports are renowned for meticulous detail, having led to the downfall of several overhyped companies in the past. This isn't just hearsay. You may remember them as the short seller that sounded the alarm on electric truck startup Nikola Corp causing the EV manufacturer's shares to plunge and leading the SEC to launch an investigation into securities fraud allegations. So, when Hindenburg makes allegations against a titan like Icon Enterprises, investors sit up and take notice. Before we dive deeper into our main story, we must take a step back and understand who Carl Icahn is, his role in the investment world, and his recent financial hits. Who is Carl Icahn? The name is almost synonymous with Wall Street activism. Icahn, a billionaire investor, is famous for his aggressive tactics of shaking up corporate boards to increase share prices. With a career spanning more than six decades, he's known for his fearless approach and has a reputation for identifying undervalued companies and pushing for change to maximize shareholder returns. His methodology is sometimes seen as controversial, but there's no denying his significant influence on Wall Street. But even the most seasoned players can get it wrong. In recent years, Icahn made a series of costly bets against the market. He believed that the US markets and the economy would falter and positioned his investments to capitalize on this expectation. However, the markets didn't align with Icahn's predictions. This miscalculation ended up costing him dearly. Over several years, these errant bets led to a staggering loss of $9 billion for his company. Reflecting on this period, Icahn admitted in an interview with Bloomberg, I strayed from what I really do the best, indicating that he regretted deviating from his tried and true investment strategy. Now, back to our main story. Here's the scoop. On May 2nd, 2023, Hindenburg released a report targeting Icon Enterprises LP, a publicly listed company that is 85% owned by Carl Icon himself. Hindenburg's report accused Icon Enterprises of inflating asset valuations and running what they called a Ponzi-like structure to fund its dividends. The implication here is that the company is using new investors' money to pay the returns for the old investors, rather than using the cash generated from operations. Now, let's pump the brakes for a moment. Although Icon Enterprises disclosed on May 10th that it had been contacted by U.S. prosecutors who issued an information request, it's important to remember that to this day, the Department of Justice has not made any official allegations. 
ICANN also dismissed Hindenburg's report as self-serving and aimed at making a profit at the expense of long-term shareholders. Nonetheless, according to Forbes, Hindenburg's accusations led to a 20% drop on that day in ICANN Enterprises' share price, wiping out $2.9 billion of ICANN's net worth. And then, in late May, the Bloomberg Billionaires Index indicated his wealth had plummeted from nearly $25 billion to just under $10 billion in the wake of Hindenburg's allegations. We cannot overlook another crucial aspect of this saga. Prior reports indicate that Icon has pledged more than 50% of his Icon shares as collateral for margin loans. For those of you who might be new to the investing game, margin loans are borrowed money that investors use to buy more securities than they could on their cash alone. This can significantly boost potential profits, but also amplify losses. And what does it mean to pledge shares as collateral? Well, this is when an investor uses their stock ownership as a guarantee for loan repayment. The lender can claim the shares if the borrower can't repay the loan. Now, why is this a big deal? Pledging shares isn't necessarily a problem in and of itself. But when a company's stock price drops rapidly, as is the case with Icon Enterprises, this can trigger a margin call. This is when the lender demands that the borrower deposit more cash or sell some of the pledged assets to offset the falling value of the collateral. If Icon Enterprises' stock continues to slide, ICANN could find himself forced to sell off assets at a lower price to meet these margin calls, potentially exacerbating his financial woes. Back to Hindenburg's report. It alleged that ICANN Enterprises was overvalued by more than 75%, trading at a 218% premium to its net asset value. This is striking when you consider that their peers, like Dan Loeb's Third Point Investors and Bill Ackman's Pershing Square Holdings, were trading at a discount to their respective NAVs. One of the key arguments made by Hindenburg was that the high premium paid by the remaining 15% of shareholders in Icon Enterprises was due to its high dividend yield, which in early May sat at 15.8%, the highest of any U.S. large-cap company. Hindenburg claims that Icon has been able to offer this high yield to investors as he elected to receive stock dividends rather than cash dividends. This means that ICANN only needs to pay 15% of the dividends in cash. And since its cash flow generating capabilities in recent years were negatively impacted by its losing short position on the market, the company has been raising funds by selling new shares to the market to meet the required cash dividend payouts. This is what led Hindenburg to claim that Icon Enterprises is using a Ponzi-like structure to pay dividends. And it doesn't stop there. Hindenburg has provided examples where Icon Enterprises allegedly overvalued its holdings. They cite the company's 90% stake in Visque's companies, a neat packaging business, which it recorded at $243 million at year-end. Meanwhile, Visque's actual market value was a mere $89 million based on its share price at the time. In another instance, Hindenburg highlighted that Icon Enterprises valued its automotive parts division at $381 million in December of 2022. Interestingly, a key subsidiary of that division filed for bankruptcy a month later. Then there's the issue of Jeffrey's Inc., the only major brokerage covering Icon Enterprises, which also profits from arranging the company's new stock sales. Hindenburg pointed out the convenient assumption in Jeffrey's equity research that Icon's dividends will continue perpetually, even in the worst case scenario. Even Bill Ackman, another titan of investing, joined the fray. 
he tweeted that Icon Enterprises reminds him somewhat of Archigo's Capital Management, the massive family office that collapsed in 2021 amid allegations of fraud. This adds another layer to the drama and underlines the severity of the accusations. He highlighted that Icon Enterprises' high dividend yield is maintained by returning capital to outside shareholders, funded by the company selling stock to investors, which he implies is unsustainable and risky. So why should you, as an investor, care about all of this? The main takeaway is the importance of conducting thorough due diligence before investing. The ongoing saga is a stark reminder that even giants can stumble and that reputation is no guarantee of sound financial practices. The markets are unpredictable, regardless of how seasoned or successful an investor might be. Diversification and staying true to one's investment strategy can be vital to mitigating such significant losses. The financial world is a thrilling landscape full of drama, and this story is no exception. As we wait for the resolution of this gripping saga, we are reminded of the importance of careful research, healthy skepticism, and prudence in investing. Remember, investing is not about making quick bucks. It's about financial discipline, knowledge, and long-term vision. Let us know in the comments how you believe this saga will unfold. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Tune in next time for more exciting investment news and insights. Remember to stay curious, vigilant, and most importantly, keep learning!